Good day and welcome back to Everything Mathematics. Today, Monday, October what? 19th? 18th? Losing track of the days. Today, we're going to continue our series with Pythagoras' theorem on the geometry. So, what is it that we're going to do today? Today, we're going to understand the theory of Pythagoras or Pythagoras' theory, and we're going to also be able to find or start finding unknown angles in right angle triangle. So we thought, needless to say, of course, we should pick up from that, that the, the Pythagoras theorem can only work with right angle triangle. So as the name implies, it's a theorem that can be applied specifically to right angle triangles to find unknown sides. So here we have an example of a right angle triangle. And this side is one of the sides that you really have to make sure you know. This side of the rectangle triangle is known as the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is really and truly the side. The easiest way to identify it is by identifying it to the right angle. So the hypotenuse will always be the side opposite or facing the right angle degree or the 90 degree angle. That's the easiest way to look at it. So the hypotenuse is the side facing the 90 degree angle and it is also the longest side in any given right angle triangle. Try what you mean. So if we go to call this side A and this side B, the hypotenuse is the longest side in actuality. What does Pythagoras theorem say? The Pythagoras theorem states, so maybe I should change this A and B here since we have it as here. The Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem states that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared. So the hypotenuse is A, let's, well, let's call it A generically. And let's say these two sides are B and C. All this theory is saying is that if you square the hypotenuse along the other two sides, the sum of the other two sides squared is equal to the hypotenuse. So this side will always be equal to b squared plus c squared when you're finding an unknown side. And in isolation, of course, it may not make sense, but well, deriving this thing is a very interesting thing. I wish I could have done that here. But let's be more practical about it. So let's see how we could find an unknown side. And I don't think I have, I have a few questions, not much. And I have a nice problem solving if I recall clearly coming up to the ending of this video. So in this case, they are asking us to find w. And again, we have to recall what the theory says. A lot of students believe that the unknown side is always, well, that's where they tend to have the most problems, where to put the unknown side. But remember, if this side here is a 90 degrees, as shown here, if this side here is a 90 degrees, then the side facing it is the hypotenuse. And according to the formula, is the hypotenuse square that is equal to the sum of the other two, two sides. So in this case, we have a scenario like this. W squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. And that's what we got here. And um, after we do this, it's a matter of just making W the subject of the formula. In this case, W is already the hypotenuse. So in this case, we're finding the hypotenuse. But not always we may be finding the hypotenuse. Sometimes we could be asked to find, let's say, this side here or this side here, as we will see in the other examples to come. However, what is critical or what is key is to be able to state this formula here carefully. And again, generally, generically, we have a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. What is the most important thing in this formula is identifying your a. And your a, remember, is always the hypotenuse whether it is given or not in this case it is not given so we find in the hypotenuse and we were given the other two sides and once we do this then it's a simple matter of just solving so let's solve this here now so we have w squared is equal to 9 plus 16 when we square 3 we get 9 when we square 4 we get 16 and this is equal to 25 if we add both of them together. So W squared is equal to 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. And to get rid of a square, we simply find the square root. Whatever we do on one side, we do on to the other side. 
So W in this case will be equal to 5 centimeter. So this side over here is 5 centimeter in length. And as I said earlier, the hypotenuse in any given right angle triangle is the longest side. And here we can see that that was pretty much proven because we got this side to be the longest by just operating normally. This triangle here specifically also form a special triangle. This is called one of the triangular triangles. So it's the 3, 4, 5 is a ratio that we should know that it would always give us some. If we know this ratio by default, sometimes we could find an unknown side even if we don't apply Pythagoras theorem. But I wouldn't go in detail with that. Let's go. Next one. So here we're given 9 centimeters, 14 centimeters, and P centimeters. And we're asked to find what is P. So how do we go about doing that? Remember how the formula goes? The hypotenuse squared. So in this case, we're supposed to have 14 squared. We are given the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is the side facing the 90 degrees. And I know sometimes students get distracted or they get thrown off when they sit like this because they don't expect the 14 to be on one side for itself. But that is what it is. And that will be equal to 9 squared plus P squared. And we don't know what is P, but that is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find P. And that is one of the beauty of Pythagoras theory. It helps us to find unknown sides of a triangle. And I don't know what P is. Quite honestly, I did not work on this beforehand. But whatever P is, it should be less than 14 centimeters in actuality, because that's what the theorem states and that's what the triangle states. In this case, I will give you an only disclaimer. If it doesn't work out to be less, it's because maybe of the numbers that I made up that, of course, are not to scale or ratio or whatever. But I've literally tried in my, early, in my early days of mathematics as a student, I honestly tried drawing random right angle triangles and then measuring it with a ruler. And indeed, I've always gotten the side opposite the 90 degree angle to be more than the other two sides individually. So you could try it up for yourself. So yes, let's solve this. If you square one um, 14, that will be 14 times 14. That should give you one, 196, I believe. 9 squared, that's supposed to be 81 plus P squared. Good. And remember, we're making PD subject, so we have to get rid of this 81 by simply transposing in this case. So we have 196 minus 81 is equal to P squared. And if I subtract 196 from, if I subtract 81 from 196, my calculator is giving me here 115 is equal to P squared. Good. And then to get rid of the square root, of the square, sorry, you just find the square root of both sides. And that would leave the P squared equal to, let's see what's the root of 115. And that is 10.7. So let me just round it off to the nearest whole number. So that's approximately 11 centimeters. Yep. So P here is 11 centimeters and it proves to stand true that again, the, the hypotenuse is the longest side of this, of this right angle. Well, any right angle, as a matter of fact, it's a nice fact to know. Let's show another example here. So here we are, we are asked to find y now. We want to find what is y. Look at y here. And again, the key here is to identify who is the hypotenuse or where is the hypotenuse. And here we could tell that this is the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse will be the side facing the 90 degrees. So in our formula, we will have 12 squared is equal to 8 squared plus y squared. By the way, it doesn't matter if we put the y here and the 8 here, because remember, addition is commutative, so it doesn't matter at the end of the day whether you put y first or 8 first, it would not affect the answer. And from here, once you could get this straight, this is where the problem comes. Once you could get this straight, you should have a problem. The problem sometimes comes if, if you identify the formula like this. y squared is equal to 12 squared plus 8 squared. If you do something like this, you will definitely end up with the right, wrong answer because the y is not the hypotenuse. And according to the formula, remember what you said earlier, is the hypotenuse squared 
that will be equal to the sum of the other two sides, not a side, the hypotenuse, not any and any side. So you have to be very careful with that. Once you could identify that, believe me, you should have no problem whatsoever. Good. So here we have 12 squared. 12 squared is supposed to be 144. Um, 8 squared is supposed to be 64 plus y squared. Good. So that's 144 minus, remember, I'm transposing the 64. So that's minus 64. If it's positive here, when you send it over, it will be negative, And that is equal to y squared. And I'm taking my calculator here. I feel lazy to do mental maths here. 144 minus 64, I'm getting here to be 80. So 80 is equal to y squared. And to get rid of a square, we find the square root. And whatever we do on one side of the equation, we do on to the other side. So y will be equal to the square root of 80. And according to my calculator, that is approximately 9 centimeters. I round off to the nearest whole number again. So I'm getting 8.9442791. And I just round off to the nearest whole number. So y, y here will be 9 meters. Oh my, I said centimeters. It's meters. This one we're working with meters. Shit, I wasn't paying attention to the previous unit. I saw a person using centimeters. It's not funny. But yes, it's 9 meters and not centimeters because here we're working with the unit of meters. Let's try our last question, and I like this one. This is where it actually gets practical. And I usually tell students, one of the ways to ensure that you understand a question, mathematically speaking, it's always safe and wise to draw a diagram. Sometimes once you draw a diagram, you have no problem. Sometimes the question is solved there for you. So let us see how a diagram will help us in this question here. So Fred is trying to climb a very tall wall with his father's ladder, which is 13 meters long. When he leaned the ladder on the wall, he covered, a, he covered 10 meters on the ground. What is the height of the wall? And believe me, in isolation, this question could be very difficult. Or it might seem very difficult. But look at how easy, or look at when we draw it, how it puts everything into perspective. So let's see if we could draw this scenario. So first of all, we understand that Fred is trying to climb a very tall wall. So I will start by drawing Fred. You don't have to be like me, but yeah, let's just put a person in. So we have Fred here, little Fred here trying to climb a very tall wall. And they tell us that Fred has a ladder. As a matter of fact, let me draw the tall wall too. So let, let's, let's assume this is a very tall wall. Compared to Fred, this is a very tall wall. And don't, don't mind my sketching now. It's not, hard. it's not easy to do this thing on a computer. So Fred is looking up at that very tall wall there. And according to the question, Fred has a ladder which is 13 meters long. When he leaned the ladder on the wall, he covered 10 meters on the ground. So let's see if we could draw that. Um, Fred is on the ground. So let's draw that ground there. This is Fred here. Fred is standing on the ground. And Fred said that he had a ladder that is 13 meters long. So you see this here? Let's call this our ladder. And that ladder is, according to Fred, 13 meters long. We also know that when he leaned that ladder on the wall, the ground, the distance that he covered on the ground is 10 meters. So 10 meters will be from where the ladder stepped in there to the wall, well, hopefully, well, not hopefully, but most likely. And then the question is asking us, what is the height of the wall? So the question wants us to find out this distance here, the height. See what happened there? Just like that, we have a right angle triangle. Beautiful question. And again, of course, we're taking a few things here for granted because, of course, we, we are assuming that this wall is erected at a 90 degree angle, which is often the case. I mean, you hardly have walls leaning. I mean, unless you have a special structure. But I mean, let's assume in this case, if it was leaning, maybe Fred would have been able to run up the wall. Maybe. I don't know. It's a, it's a possibility. But with this in mind, I think our life was made a lot easy. So here, because we have a right angle triangle, we could easily apply Pythagoras theorem. And remember the theorem states, 
that a square is equal to b square plus c square a being the hypotenuse the hypotenuse being the side opposite the right angle in which this case is represented by the ladder which we know is 13 cent 13 meters so 13 meters squared is equal to 10 let me put it the other way around is equal to the height of the wall plus 10 meters squared so here we evidently trying to find h naught which i use as generic value for the height of the wall and when i do that now 13 squared is 169 that is equal to h squared plus 100 and when i transpose my 100 i bring my 100 over here 169 yeah 13 squared is 169 i bring my 100 100 on the other side so on this side i would have 169 minus 100 that will be equal to h squared um this is supposed to be 69 is equal to h square and to get rid of a square root to get rid of a square sorry i keep mixing up these two to get rid of a square we find the square root and the square root of 69 is approximately eight meters to the nearest whole number so that's equal to h so our very tall wall here is actually eight meters beautiful question and these are the things that you would get at your cxc level of course they wouldn't just give you a triangle and tell you find the unknown side no you have to be able to apply this in many areas even when you're doing compound shapes you find in the area of a compound shape you're trying to find an unknown side but you identify that there is a right angle these are the strategies that you have to be able to see so this will bring us to the end of today's video again keep practicing that theory it's a very important theory and you will need it in all level of mathematics maybe in the future i will do a video demonstrating how this theory came about because it's quite interesting and maybe when you do that you may never forget it anymore hopefully right so that will bring us to the end of today's video as always feel free to like share subscribe comment in the section subscribe of course if you haven't as yet comment if you have any question or any question that anything that you would like us to go through and turn on that notification so that you can you can be